catch here. We have uh, Vidyato Wajaya versus Alex Bernici. For those just joining us, I'm Gavin Verhey, joined here by Patrick Chapin wow. and Joey Pasco. And we're bringing you live coverage of the Star City Games Open Series here in San Jose. Yeah. We're in round seven of eight, so this is a crucial round for a lot of people. On your left, you'll see Vidyato, Vidyato Wajaya, otherwise known as Vidi, to his friends. Uh, for those who don't know him, might not know the name before, he made a lot of money in Versus System. He was widely considered one of the top two players, him and Michael Jacob. Uh, we're at the top of that game, but then the game went under, and he's been playing a lot of Magic since. I, uh, I've known him for a while, he's a really great player, and I heard he's playing a pretty innovative deck here, um, based yeah, on some talk I heard earlier. What's that? You keep throwing that word around like it's not... Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> innovate, yeah. I am with the innovator, right. so right. I feel uh, like I have the power. I th think he said black white. Oh, yeah, we're waiting on some but, but it might be one of his opponents. I only overheard him saying it oh, earlier, yeah. so we'll find out here in a second. Well, a black, white, a black white deck actually top aided the, uh, the open last week. Yeah, he said there's like Nighthawk and uh, Whoa. him to Turok. I'm not sure if that was his, him or his opponent, though, so we're going to find out. Huh? Alex, on the other hand, is a well-known player, made top, uh, top four. Uh, Made to the finals today, right? Yeah, finals of the Star City Games Open Series standard, standard today. He has four top eights. Yeah, he's just player of the year last year, won a full set of power nine. Um, and he is playing his old standby, Murpho. That's awesome. So we're going to find out shortly. This should be a pretty good match. He's pretty hardcore with the Merfolk. He was playing Merfolk even though he knew darn well that Survival was the best in completely degenerate. Yeah. He play it <laughs> Stick into the craft. I mean, that's how he does it, right? Like, he played Jund, Jund, and then Rug again this year. Like, he just keeps playing it over and over. He gets good with the best deck, or one of the best decks, and just there's always yeah, a good weekend for it. So I don't know if I would call Merfolk the best deck. That's very generous. <laughs> uh, but it's a deck that fits his play style. It, is, it gives him the room to do the, you know, it, it rewards him for being familiar with the deployments. Uh, yeah, I mean, the next you play are never always the best deck, but sometimes, you know, you just They're play, good, consistent, Right, they're consistent yeah. and good. You just play them for long enough, you learn how to play them, you know how to tweak your sideboard. Um, I'm interested to see, what, uh, how do you pronounce his last name again? You said we, uh, Wajaya? Video Wajaya is what I've always said, but I've only Wajaya? ever called him yeah. Vidi, so okay. well, let's call him Vidi. Yeah, Vidi, I, like, if he's, you know, from the same, if he's cut from the same cloth as Michael Jacob, this guy should be a guy to watch. What's that? Do you have yeah. any deck <laughs> Michael, okay, uh... MJ oh, okay. often uh, found that he and Vidi were opposites by being at the top of the game. Like, uh, like MJ prided himself on being a very good like technical player. I feel, and uh, Vidi and like tested a lot. Vidi would just grab decks at the last minute and is very like self-taught, just very intuitive in the way he plays. His so, his, uh, his very innovative deck appears to be stock counterbalance. Man, must have been his opponent. I was so excited to see Vampire Nighthawk here. Trying to uh, get some deck lists. Oh, right actually. Now. Uh, no, Prozac told us when he was in the booth that he's playing Prozac's list card for card that he played today and went 0-2 with. So, VD, so VD's playing VD is counter just playing top. countertop. Okay. At the Revile, could not, there could, there's nothing worse than an epic. Oh my god, the main deck pivoting. Oh wow. Who is wow, this guy? Wow, that's bad. Yeah, uh, just stone face. Not even, doesn't even <laughs> hesitate. Just cool, calm, professional. Set the, set the pivoting needle in play. Adam Prozac noted that he, uh, a lot of people have skewed like the pivoting needle package, but he still has Trinket Mage. And he thinks it's important so we can get the needle for matches like this one, where Aether Vial is the make or break card. Wow. And uh, it certainly worked good here. There was no force from Alex. Thank and you. here we are. Here are the deck lists. So, yeah, we do have the deck lists. Um, yeah. So, uh, Ferdinand hasn't really strayed from his formula very much. So yeah, he's been used Kira Glass, oh, glass Spinner a number of times. The Great Glass Spinner to uh, help protect against, you know, just spot removal. Exactly. Um, yeah, not really too much different. I mean, before he had them in the board, but uh, and more Mervok sovereigns. But it looks like he's he's made space so that uh, this side. I guess he just has more. Like he has back to basics in the board now. Uh, is the one Mistress Factory? Has he used that before? Yeah, he's used that a couple times. Okay. He always said that you, like the first Mistress Factory, is not significantly worse than the Mutavolts. The Mutavolts are better, obviously, because they all pump up and everything. Right. Mm -hmm. But the nice thing about Mistress Factory is that you can pump up your Mutavolts. Oh, that's really clever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he said that one, the first because if you play too many Mistress Factories, it screws up your colored mana because he has Mutavolt and Wasteland and Factory, you know? And he doesn't exactly have a ton of islands despite having some double blue cards. Huh. But uh, he said the first Mistress Factory was worth it just because of the ability to power up your Mutavolts. Wow. So back to the game, looks like we've got a Curse Catcher in there for Alex. It's interesting, Vidi went for uh, another basic, trying to make sure that he doesn't get you know set behind by Wastelands. Right. Looks like he's just trying to get up to Jace mana. You know, as long as things are relatively stable by the time he drops his Jace, huh. it's going to be really hard for the Murfolk deck to come back. As a man who knows his Jace as well, I'll take your word for it on this one. <laughs>
Uh, so there's another fetch land. I really like Vidi's position here. I mean, the fact that uh, that Alex is already so far behind on mana. Yeah. And, uh, he's dazed. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and Vidi's just got a nice curve, a nice complement of cards. I mean, Counterspell, is that Vendillion click, Counterspell, and Jace? Yeah. yeah that's and I, th I thought I saw land. Counterbalance, too. I mean, he's just got a nice mix of cards. Yeah. And he goes uh, Counterspell on the Silver Gold Act. Oh. Oh, so he's actually, he actually doesn't have one in his hand. He needs to draw land here is what he needs. Okay. He, yeah, he does have, the, what, the counterbalance, the counterspell oh. that we just Oh saw my there, god, so there we go. <laughs> Got a feeling this is, this is, this is going to be a big swing point here, because, like, all he has to do is, oh, he's not even going to play it? Yeah, he chooses not to. Interesting. I guess he's trying to get, um, I guess, Vendillion Click to come down as an initial blocker. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh, now, and his landing's wastelanded. That's rough. Um, decides to uh, use that mana, make some use of it. What what Prozac said is uh, he felt like the aggro matchups were pretty good in general, so he didn't want to play any fire spouts as opposed to the list we've seen from Jerry Thompson and Most uh, people play fire spouts. LSV. Yeah, so uh, LSV and Jerry both are playing fire spouts in this tournament. Prozac was like, nope, I don't think you need them against the beatdown decks, so I'm just going to play without them. Uh, Does he even have it on the board? Uh, let's see. No, there are none in the oh, board. Oh, he uses Peacekeeper and Moat instead. Peacekeeper, Moat, in Curse Scroll, and Engineered Explosives. Very different direction. Yeah. I guess he doesn't even have the red mana, though. His mana base is a little bit different. Oh, no. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's got some different stuff going on here than some of the lists we've seen today. He's, he's, he doesn't even have Tarmogoyfs either. Just straight up no, blue-white. straight up blue-white. Very That's, stable uh, mana base, but it's interesting. I guess like, I guess I'm just interested to figure out how this, how he proposes to, to win against these aggro decks. Like... I would love to see him play against the Elf deck. Yeah, that sounds yeah, like nice. a like a rough time. Jerry only really pulled those games out due to Fire Spout, I feel, you know. That was yeah, so I mean, crucial for him. I mean, I guess Engineer Explosives and Moat. I mean, I mean, yeah, I guess like Engineer Explosives, Moat, Peacekeeper. I mean, you've got a few things you can do, but it's like um, as, long as, as long as the uh, Moat stays off the table or Peacekeeper. Yeah, in the meantime, I think uh, Click... I don't know if it revealed his hand. I don't know what, what he ended up doing, but it doesn't look like he discarded anything. Um, but it looks like. Uh, well, I certainly hope he wouldn't discard. Been doing quick goes to the bottom. Well, yeah, I'm, yeah, <laughs> good, good point. <laughs> he didn't lose anything. Uh, but but yeah, I guess uh, if I'm looking at his graveyard, then. Well, no, didn't Alex kinda... have a Mutavolt on the battlefield? Yeah, so so, so he, the, it must have resolved and traded with the Mutavolt when, yeah. when uh, Alex tried to attack. Yeah. Right, but he had played the click uh, before the attack because uh, remember he he played it in response to the wasteland. Uh, Maybe he thought Vidi wouldn't block, but either way, the Aether Vial is going to ensure that uh, he keeps getting to play, keeps getting to play threats despite Isn't not having that, a no, needle. No, that's what's needle. Oh, the needle. Oh, the needle. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So I mean, wow. I think it, at this point, I think at this point, Jace is going to uh, totally take over. He's good at that. And Alex on one land. So I guess Alex really needs to draw another island so he can play a Lord of Atlantis of some sort. You know, like a Lord of Atlantis could really help him catch up a little bit here because right. he's got to start making progress. And he has a wasteland. It's not exactly what he wanted, but hey, that's Silver Gill Adept will uh, help a little, and he's um, got the option of possibly, uh, hopefully, we'll dig into another island. See, even here, like a single a single trinket mage or a swords to plowshares, uh, is really gonna would really 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 set Alex behind. Uh, and there's the trinket mage. Yeah, I mean this is got a feeling this game is just gonna spiral out of control. Yeah, I mean no fire spouts, but Prozac just said he didn't feel like he needed them and. This game is maybe showing why. Obviously, there's still a lot of game left to be played, but... Well, see, I don't know. Like, you don't always have the Miser's Pithy Needle in your opening hand. <laughs> it is true. It is true. Like, must be nice, but... I mean, although to be fair, that could be a reason why, as to why he kept the hand, right? Like, it was a little late on lands, and he was like, well, you know, I, I know I can beat Aether Vial this way. And I know Alex... I guess Alex you sit down across from Alex. You know, yeah. what, you, you know what it's hitting for. That's exactly. True, yeah. uh, Alex plays one way. So, he decides to fate seal Alex, trying to keep him off, uh, I guess keep track of what he's doing and considering keeping him off a of double blue probably. And also uh, protect his Jace. Yeah, and um, got a feeling that there's a uh, good chance that uh, Trinket Mage, yep. Yep, here Trinket it comes. Mage, guessing at this point, um, 
Hop is the only other option. Or I guess get he has a seat, a seat of Synod. In Synod. Yeah. Yeah, he might he might get a seat. He probably doesn't need the top with the uh, the Jason play. But I mean he could go either way. Yeah. Seat it is. It's actually kind of interesting because Adam was talking earlier about how that cursed scroll was main deck for a long time. And it'd be great in this situation if it was still main deck, you could play it and just start killing off the Murphic one by one. Yeah, but this is a, the exact type of situation that's like it's a, it'd be a little overkill. You right. know, like the you curse scroll would totally take it. over this game. But you got a Jace at four that you're protecting with a <laughs> pigeon true. needle on vial, so Oh, except there's Lord of Atlantis. Spell snare. Spell snare for yeah. it. Yeah, things are gonna things are gonna fall apart really quickly. And that seed of the synod was actually I mean, obviously protecting the spell snare from the curse catcher. Right. So um, definitely, definitely tight play, and uh, Alex sees the writing on the wall, but still got to play it out. Just try to grind. Yeah, did you uh, hear about his match yesterday, where he was in a situation where, where it looked like he should have conceded? He even told us that he was like so close to conceding, but he didn't. Uh, stripped an Avengers Endicar off the top to win game one with a minute and 11 seconds left on the clock. Wow. It was very impressive. I had so many times that we thought he was out of that game, and so did he, apparently. Yeah. But just goes to show you that you can uh, stick in it sometimes and pull out wins you couldn't otherwise. The board situation was ridiculous. <laughs> it's true. Match. I think there were four Titans on the board. So uh, Vidi's going to brainstorm with that Jace here, which will give him some gas, hopefully. Well, I mean... I'm trying to figure out what Alex needs to do in order to be able to come back from this situation, right. you know? I mean, I think one of the things he can do is if he just, just starts blinking, right? Like, he has to find a way to, you know, he's, he's not losing, but he's also not winning uh, just as far as damage goes. Like, if you give Alex more time, he could draw more Lord of the Lannises or something like that, potentially. But you're saying Vidi's not, like, Vidi's totally got this game no, locked no, no, up, no, right? No, no, like, he's not, I mean, he's winning, but he's not, like, actively winning, you know? Every but, time you activate Jace, you are actively winning, right? Are you talking about just the life total? Yeah, I'm talking about just life. Like, he's he's had, I mean, he's he trying to find like, a way to close. He has four creatures that are all tiny. Like, this is a deck that <laughs> doesn't, like, <laughs> it's not the winning way, he, with win, like, the way exactly. he wins these games is he moves Jace up to 13, you know? Uh, I, I, I guess think, that's totally like, a possibility. I mean, he doesn't even have anything that deals damage. You know, he's got Vendillion click with right. the Caracas, but... I mean, uh, mostly I was looking to set up, like, top and counterbalance or something like that. Uh, see, I don't even think it's going to come to that. I think just the raw card advantage of the fact that, I mean, Alex is pretty much stuck on one spell a turn. That's true. And Vidi's drawing two cards <laughs> a turn with a massive amount of selection with his shuffling right. and his brainstorming and, and a deck full of great cards like Ponder and Brainstorm. Yeah, and the two colors of the deck has, have allowed him to run some some cards that, you know, the other decks might be trying to shave to cram things in like Fire Spout, but he's got Spell Snares, which look absolutely phenomenal here. Um, and two Ponders, that's really interesting as even... Just a little bit more library manipulation? Yeah. yeah. Do you think uh, those would be better as preordains, or is the shuffling pretty important here? Well, it's not about the shuffling. It's that when you already have a lot of shuffling, then ponder becomes better. Right. Plus, ponder has natural synergy with counterbalance. That's if you true. lead with turn one ponder, you can just set it so that your counterbalance will counter there too. Oh, that's very true. Yeah, it's actually a really important line for a lot of the ways the deck ends up playing out. Plus, yeah, when you have... Yeah. When you have Trinket Mages, and uh, Flooded Strands, and Misty Rainforests, I mean, that's a lot of different ways to shuffle already. Right. But the biggest thing is just the Ponder and the Counterbalance. Yeah, that seems huge. I mean, but yeah, with the, that you can go like Ponder, take the top card, and then, you know, draw next turn, and then crack Fetch Line and shuffle everything else away. Because the issue with Ponder, one of them is sometimes you'll just have, like, the third card you don't want, you have to leave it there. Yeah, or even if there's only one card you want, you just put the card you want on top, get that, and then shuffle that same turn if exactly. it's, like, turn two or three or four. You know? Exactly. In general, I, I mean, it's, like, it's pretty clear at this point. Preordain is just better than any of those if oh, you're yes. not going to shuffle. But, like, Brainstorm... I mean, Brainstorm's in a league all of its own, but, like, <laughs> yeah. bra but with, uh, if you can reliably always shuffle, then Ponder has a good argument for it, and then Counterbalance pushes it over the top, just setting it up, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. Priority doesn't set up Counterbalance very well. Uh, Jace is, uh, what, on three, it looks like? Yeah. It's on three, yeah, it's Does pretty mighty. Oh, and uh, here comes Vendelian click. Chris Ketcher definitely can't do anything about that one. And he sees Aether Pile Curse Catcher. Oh, just, just gonna, <laughs> the smirk on Alex. Just gonna leave him there. Seems like a good plan. And, uh, do you block here if you're beating? Probably not, right? No, why? I definitely block. Sure, Draxler. why not? Yeah. Who cares? What do you want? What are you gonna do with the Vendillion Click besides trade with the Curse Catcher? Right, we're gonna attack seven times? Nah. <laughs> That's what I'm yeah, I no. So. I mean, there's nothing wrong with thinking about it, but. 
Plow on Curse Catcher is kind of cute. Alright. Plow the Curse Catcher. Can't really counter it. Doesn't accomplish anything. <laughs> <laughs> I guess just takes the one. Likes to put him on the clock. Oh, there's Chris Catcher. I guess he does want to attack. I don't know. I mean, if uh, unless he really he wants the Caracas to be. I don't know. I mean, if Vidi uh, finds like a Trinket Mage or another his second Trinket Mage or his Vidalcan Shackles, there's a number of cards you can find to take over the game here. Maybe he just wants to provide a clock. Oh, there's new, the new Caracas on top, so he can just return That's his click and do it every single turn. That's why he was letting the. Uh, which is pretty nice. Yeah, so he did swing. Oh, but he opts not to do it this turn. Well, no, 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 he doesn't need to do it yet. It doesn't accomplish anything to be in his hand. It's gonna, like, he'll, he'll do it later. Like, at this point, he might as well just wait to keep the click in play. Well, at the end of his opponent's turn, he could have uh, returned it and then cast it and seen, uh, oh, he knows the last card is Aether Vial, so it's not going to accomplish anything, you're right. So, brainstorming with Jace. Caracas with Vendillion Click is quite a bit more efficient than Riptide Lab. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is true. Caracas is such an unbelievable card. It's, you know, it's great. It enables so many things. First of all, it returns Emrakul to Aeon's Torn to their hand. Uh, <laughs> or, but, Iona. I or Iona. Or Iona. But also, like, we've seen it in the Green and Taxes. Right. It featured one of those Magnar, earlier return Magnar, 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 you know, it does a number of things. You can even return your opponent's Vendillion Click. Uh, usually not that effective. Right, but... But you know, but they, they like tap option. out for a click or something, oh, yeah, yeah, or yeah. return it back. So just as a, th a tempo threat. Yeah. Right, getting some damage. It's just grinding him out. I can see, I see what you mean about Vidi having an opposite style of MJ. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and there's counterbalance. It's counterbalance. The noose counterbalance. continues to tighten. No, no thought for sword. Blue white control with yeah. trinket mages and just lots of good cards. And Jace the Mind Sculptor. I mean, yeah. th it's <laughs> definitely he headlining the topic good cards. <laughs> yes, that that's how it. Oh, Jace is just in a league of its own, right? Like, but I think, well, in its primary victory condition, you know, he doesn't actually bother with that. Like, I mean, obviously, you have Vendillion Cloak with Caracas, yeah. but that's not even. I mean, it's most just, of the time, once you lock him out with, yeah. you know, yeah, if you have Jace, you can you know, usually win from any position once right. you kind of balance lock him. I mean, especially in Legacy, you just have top counterbalance, then there are only so many cards they can draw, you just keep looking at their top card and yeah. that's it. So, uh, hey Gavin, that came entirely unplugged. You know, I can see the plug, it's there's about a, six inches from the thing. For those of you uh, at home, there's uh, this faulty screen that we have having trouble with it's all day. It keeps turning on and off, flickering, and now it's just apparently unplugged. We plugged it back in. So it should be good. We have a higher resolution screen. There we go. So, so we can see a little bit better. We can also see uh, underneath the graph. So, so Alex uh, drops down to nine, and Jace is on two counters. Just maintaining parity with uh, the Fate Stelium Jace. And Click gets in for three. Yeah, at this point, it's like he's just trading. I mean, Alex just keeps attacking, and Jace, Jace just keeps fate sealing and in the meantime right. uh, Vidi is just swinging in with uh, Vendillion Click. Oh my. At this point there's no, uh, I don't think mind sculpting is exactly what's gonna... I wonder why not Vendillion, like why not return Vendillion Click to his hand and, and Click himself? Or well, is he just holding the counterbalance, the, the second counterbalance in his hand to have a two in case he needs to put it on top of his deck? Uh, that's potentially true. The Merfolk deck doesn't run any hard counters, right? That could uh, counter that Vendillion Click? Force will? Yeah, but he knows Alex's hand. Like, he always knows Alex's hand. Oh, because of he's Jason. Well, he's been putting several cards on the bottom now, though, so he's not totally certain on what Alex has in his hand. And if that click is just two attacks yeah. away from victory, it doesn't make a lot of sense to uh, risk that. Plays the second counterbalance. It's a little and bit Alex packs it up. All right, and there we go. Alex packs him in. And uh, BD takes the first game, and, you know, Prozac was just in here. He's like, don't need Fire Spout. I feel perfectly fine on. My own, I can use my cards to deal with it, and that's what we just saw. He took that game, and he's got a bit of a smile on his face there as he heads to his sideboard. So while they're shuffling up, Patrick, you've uh, you mentioned on Twitter that you have a preview card coming up, coming up on the 19th, right, this Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday on uh, Star City Select, I'm going to have a preview card, an exclusive preview card.
and it's uh, definitely very exciting. It's my, definitely my favorite preview card I've had. You know, it's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've had some cards that have been fringe, you know, reasonable players who, like, they have applications, but mm -hmm. this is the first one I've gotten that is going to be pretty big. You yeah. know, this one's exciting. Uh, right. Yeah, I know you, uh, I actually even wrote down what you tweeted to Brian Cole about him loving the card. <laughs> this is definitely a card after Brian Cole's heart. Yeah. He will, uh, he will definitely be a big fan of this one. No, I, did, did you say something about you were going to be dropping hints on your Facebook page? Uh, in, yeah, in, like just before, like uh, okay, on, so, so. yeah, on the public Pat, uh, Patrick Chapin, the Innovator Public Figure page. Okay, you know, just leading up to the to the official preview. Okay. Um, it's it's still a few days off. The problem with giving too much information about previews, yeah, people are very resourceful, especially with the orb, uh, with yeah. the two different orbs. So, tell them anything too far in advance, then they'll crack the code immediately. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, let's see. What can I? What can I say? I can say. Uh, it is a nice source of card advantage. That, that's good. I like that. <laughs> but it's a, a card after Brian Cole's heart. Those th things don't normally... <laughs> Wait a second. I mean, he likes Revelark of Ranger Eos, I suppose. Interesting. It's Revelark of Eos. <laughs> Bri uh, Brian Cole is a man who has liked <laughs> Siege Gang Commander more than most as well. That's true. Yeah. That's true. It sounds like you're previewing Hero of Bladehold. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, I, I think Hero of Bladehold's a, you know, just, it's, I mean, even though it makes more cards, mm -hmm. it's not really card advantage, because it's really just one threat, right? Like, the Hero of the Bladehold's the only threat well, by itself, you at know? at first, right. But, but, but I'm, it's not like those other tokens disappear once the hero's gone, if, if the hero Yeah, but if you're hitting them with a Hero of Bladeheart, I mean, yeah, like, once you're at that point, it's not even really about card advantage anymore. It's about the fact that you have this threat that goes from 7-4 to 11-4. Right. You know. Okay. Like, so it's not Hero of Bladehold. That's another game. No, my Apparently. card is not the same card that has been, has revealed. been yeah. revealed. Okay. Um, I mean, all these token-making effects seem very good in a set with Battlecry, because that's obvious synergy there. Great for limited play, great for constructed play. And uh, if it's like Siege Gang Commander, I think it'll be a winner. Uh, I didn't um, say it's like Siege Gang Commander. I said Brian Kowal likes Siege Gang right, Commander. Of course. We're just trying to... It, yeah. I'm definitely not saying anything about whether right. or not it's like We're Siege We're going to try to break the code right here, <laughs> <laughs> just between the two of us. See, no more. All right, no more. Let's get off this topic before, uh, before suddenly Chapin's awesome preview card is ruined. As long as it's not Archmage Ascension. <laughs> no, that, that one, I mean, that's the thing about when you talk about cards, not just spoiling them, but... um. You know, when you analyze cards, do you say, what is a situation, or what would have to happen to make this good? And that's just a way that I don't feel like a lot of people look at cards. Yeah, I mean, like, okay, when I had to, like, when I got the preview card of Archmage Ascension, like, obviously Archmage Ascension, like, nobody had any doubt that Archmage Ascension is among the weaker cards, mm -hmm. like, most narrow cards in the set, but it has applications. Right. And rather than dismiss cards, because you're like, oh, that card's obviously just, like, that's crazy, why would anybody do that? That's too hard, or it's... <laughs> Like whatever, like instead looking to see well what might make it actually good, right? Because you got to remember, Necrobones was dismissed right yeah. out the gate too. You know, I people dismiss that. all kinds of insane cards because they're just so obviously bad. Yeah. So it's so much better to instead just think about what are possible ways to use a card, even if it's not going to end up breaking the tournament open. It's interesting to understand what it is. Plus, who knows? Maybe some context changes. Like maybe they print a card in Mirror to Besieged that makes Archmage Ascension insane. Right. You know. I mean, it is still standardly. We could we could actually see that happen. Like okay, imagine if there's you know if there's some if there's some land that enters the battlefield tapped, taps for colorless, and uh, during your draw phase you draw an extra card and then put a card back. Yeah. You know, like that card doesn't actually do very much for you, but it doesn't cost you that much either. Mm -hmm. It gives you this weird little tiny bit of selection, maybe with shufflers or whatever. Right. But it makes it so you're technically drawing two cards drawing a turn. Two cards, yeah. And then you can trigger the arch make your attention relatively easy. You know, right. like Jace, and, Jace and I, draws three cards. Well, right. you, but if you have Jace, you're winning anyway. The that's true. Yeah. That's the, <laughs> the, the, something that that you might do that's super low to the ground, the super uh, low investment. You know. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I don't know that there's any card like that, but it's still good to understand that so that when new things come, you can try to, you know, analyze the, uh, the new context. Because, I mean, magic is a really complicated system. There's so many different things going on, so many different cards, so many different people, the metagame changes, so many different decks, and new sets always coming out, and errata, and, and, new, uh, and like, cards getting banned or restricted or unbanned, or, I mean, so trying to mentally put, you know, get some kind of mental space where you can figure out what cards are for, what what you can do with it, just seems like a very good shortcut. 
Now you just reminded me of something uh, <laughs> when you were talking about the banning and un bannings and unbannings. We had uh, Jerry in here yesterday. Oh. And he told us you didn't bring a land tax deck so that you guys could do your challenge, uh, which you guys talked about on Yo MTG Taps. Remember no. the, the he, land tax? No, he didn't ask me about a land tax deck. No, no, he didn't say that he, that you uh, he asked you about it. But no, he didn't. He, but oh, no, yeah, he, he didn't say he asked you. Oh, about yeah, it, I have a land tax deck. Oh, you, do you have one with you? Yeah, I okay. didn't play it in this event because right, right. they, well, they wouldn't let me. It's not legal. <laughs> it's not you know, legal, yeah, this event, I, I, I guess. Yeah, I borrowed yeah. an affinity deck for you know the one round yeah. I had time to play right. here, but yeah, I mean my land tax deck doesn't. Fit these tournament rules. No, not if he at wants all. me to beat up on his. No, but you, you guys had the, the challenge. Yeah, where he, he's, Is he around? We gotta get that. We gotta. We gotta do that. Yeah, all right. Yeah. yeah. You guys gotta do the land because that, that was originally planning on doing it in Atlanta, but I don't think he's gonna be able to make it to that one. So I think we're gonna okay. do it here. I mean, um, if you guys, if yeah. you guys are up for it, I, you know, I didn't expect it. I kind of assumed you just didn't oh have it because God, we absolutely. didn't hear any more about it. Jerry wants to play me with where I I get to play land tax and he doesn't. That's that's his format. Because because what? yeah, the, uh, legacy. Brian Kibler. Here. Brian Let's see, Brian. Here. Brian, what's your perspective yeah. on this? The rules are, Jerry has to play legacy. I have to play legacy, but I must have land taxes in my deck. That seems seems sort of weird. Except <laughs> he has to play the same deck he played in the open. Okay, that that's that, the, that, that, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that seems fine. Cause, I mean, it's like okay, well, you know, what sort of deck would you go with land tax? What's good against that? No, like, no, no, no. Jerry, right? Jerry has oh, to play. He wants to play a counterbalance deck against a land tax deck. That's that's his plan. He has to. It, he didn't know it was going to be cut off right. at the time. The the at the time he made the the the, the I guess the challenge. The dare. Right, right, yeah, sure. the, ch the challenge. It was that. Uh, the, was Jerry was Jerry like born yet when land tax was like legal? Like, no. Like <laughs> these kids today have no. He said it's not even good. Is what he said. He said it's not even good. It wasn't that he said it was broken. He said it's not even good. That's wow. Demented. Yeah. Talk about a guy who's never had to sit there discarding for the first five turns of the game because each player just... Mox, Diamond, Land Tax, go. Yeah, shit. Your turn. <laughs> what do you want to do? Would, well, you, would you... Oh, you're... You, you want to play... No? What, well, what do you want to do? Well, we'll see if we can get that maybe even under... Uh, under the camera, yeah, that later. would be fantastic. We have some extra time. In the meantime, we have a game two of this match going on, and uh, Alex led off the double Chris catcher, and VD has his uh, top. No uh, Aether Vial out of the Merfolk deck this time. And no, and no pithy needle to rival it either. Uh, but he does have moat. <laughs> the curses are getting caught. Well, wow. moat is really hard for Alex, isn't it? <laughs> yes. The the thing about curse catcher, curse catcher is instant or sorcery. It is not non creature like spell pierces. So if he drops a moat, there's four Korra home commanders, two Kira great glass spinners, and that's pretty much it. Like so. An yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, like as far as getting through moat, like he has no bounce, he has no outs to it. He has to just win with one of his six flyers. I, I mean, obviously he also has force will somewhere in his deck, but this is he going has, to... He has a wasteland in play, like moat costs four. Oh my. And he draws <laughs> the, uh, the Miser's Engineer Explosives. And it resolves. This is, uh, dude, this guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Vidi is, wow, that's... This is really bad. <laughs> this is really bad for Alex. So, all right. So this casually just good. attacking for three, stone face. Just it's not a problem. Whatever. And he knows uh, things are only going to get more problematic from here, as all those curse catchers are going to head to the graveyard. Well, the sick thing, yeah. I mean, and Alex doesn't have another win. Well. Wow. All right. So he's going to crack it and. Uh, here comes Engineer Explosives. Spinning the top first, of course. Uh, I guess just. Uh, you could do it the other way. Like I don't know if he has another top. There's all uh, like the alternative. Did he just forget to do it? Yeah. I th I mean, oh my uh, God! He just didn't do it. He just didn't do it. The correct so that was just a punt because the correct yeah, play, if you don't want the top, is to just activate the top, top yeah. and explode in response. Right. And then you still at least you just draw an extra card. Yeah. So I mean that was just a that was just a mistake. And, and his head he's like, don't even need the top to win this match. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, like, who doesn't want an extra? Right. Uh, exactly. I mean yeah, that's how I feel. So I mean I'm sure it was just, just a definitely mistake. definitely a little bit of a mistake, but um, things he's, are things are looking good for oh, there's that video. Curse anyway. scroll. Hmm. No, that's another yeah, top. Curse scroll. Well. Yeah, yeah no, he, he's, he's got, got a trinket mage. He oh. boards in one curse scroll. They had it made that's that for a while, but he said they didn't need it made that. So yeah, curse scroll is a sick trinket mage target. Talk about the cards you want against all these tribal decks. So, uh, yeah, I mean, especially the way the counterbalance deck plays, so often it only has one, two cards in its hand. There's a, there's a creature that can attack. Yep, Coral Home Commander. 
Although it looks like uh, he has Jason Lens sculpted now. Oh, that's going to be an issue. But he's choosing to, uh, to go for the top. Well, he doesn't have a fourth land at the moment. And I think I saw swords in his hand. Nope, maybe not. Yeah, he's looking for that fourth land. Oh, found a sword on top. No, oh, no, I think he saw a sword before, but he put it back. Okay. No, oh, no it's Ponder. Yeah. The original Ponder. Looking for land? Oh, oh my god. No land there. He's shuffling away moat. This seems... Interesting. I'm like curious I think why he chose this line of play. It seemed like, like he was in a better position a couple of minutes ago. Like... Before he failed to get his extra card. Yeah. And then the extra card turned out to be moat, because he put the moat back. Yeah. He ends up losing... That, that play actually cost him moat. I mean, and the game's still going very well for him, but it just like there are like we're starting to see the beginnings of a potential avenue for out. Uh, <laughs> Wait, is his hand just Jace? Jace? Yeah. <laughs> this is just three cards or two cards. Three. Well, I, I, Alex can Alex can get to a three three, but not well. Not if he doesn't have another land. Oh, but he, he, he had he had another land. He dazed. Your land. Oh, he dazed. There you go. Yeah. So Curse Scroll is not gonna just kill it. Okay. But uh, he has no outs to Curse Scroll. Like other than obviously this, like yeah. oh, I mean, yeah. he has no Wasted. no way to get rid no of no pithy needle or anything. No, nope. nothing. Is there not another land? He may not be able to pay for a daze. I don't know if Alex actually has a daze in his hand. This is a pretty fast clock. I mean, it would be insane yeah. if Alex pulls this out. And there's the land. This is this is pretty much a wrap. Force of will for the game. Oh. Force of will for the game. <laughs> God, if he has force will here. Oh. No, he doesn't. No force. That goes back. Alice slaps those islands down. And, a little uh, frustrated. I'm pretty sure Viddy has a. He's spell like, I keep <laughs> pulling his hair out. I think Viddy has a spell pierce in hand. <laughs> gotta give it to Alex. Mana screwed two games in a row. <laughs> Still just grinding. <laughs> yeah. Opponent shut, gets rid of the. I mean, I guess he doesn't know that his opponent doesn't have moat. But. Yeah. Curse scroll, the needle. Oh, uh, oops. But show, oh show you spells goodness. in there. So, yeah, he does have spell, uh, spells in there, but he didn't even. He just decided to kill it with the uh, scroll. Oh, oh of man. course, why not? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it makes sense. I didn't realize he only had one card. Yeah. Dead man. This is it. Yep. I, uh, if Alex pulls this one out, I uh, I don't know what to tell you. Is he gonna play Kira? Yeah, that's a, that's a uh, card that matters that's a, a little. Start, I mean, yeah. if he can just attempt the bounce with Jace, then kill it. And then kill, yeah. Then, so. Yeah. So I think that's Medallion Click and uh, and uh, oh, Spell Snare. I think Alex has played at this point is hoping that Viddy uh, does a game rule violation or something. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. I mean, you also like if you don't like, you might as well play it out in a lot of these scenarios because you don't know. Like maybe the other person does mess up somehow. You can't always be sure. Right. You don't know like what times you're wrong about right. the fact that you can't win. Right. Uh, exactly. And maybe he just gets a warning, or you know, already has a warning for some dumb thing. Right. Like. You know. Or, but what if he plays? What if his next three draws in a row are all mutables? Right. There, there, there are definitely. Or a Mistress Factory and two mutables. Oh, there you, know? you go. This is a this is a game a game two situation. Uh, you know, where where Alex is down uh, down a game. Yeah, it doesn't but, accomplish anything. But, but, but what, what what I'm saying is that there's there's a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of times when you see people who concede, like dramatically before they should, especially in game one situations. For instance, like I was playing a, a match in the Legacy event today, where my opponent, uh, my opponent thought seized my Mox Diamond and left me with like a, a hand of completely uncastable spells, and I just spent the entire the entire game discard, 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 while his Dark Confidant revealed cards that let me get, get information about his deck for game two. Yeah. I mean, like there, you know, I think a lot of players would just be like, oh, I concede in frustration. But I mean, I was getting you know some kind of value there by getting information from my what my opponent played and revealed from confidant. Absolutely. But people it, concede way too often. Uh, agreed. They agreed. just want to get out of that right. feeling bad exactly. that they're losing. And, they just and, want and to they're stop. Just, they're just losing losing value every time that they do it. The, the only the only times that I feel like it's right to concede is either when you're going to be giving away information, like if you start discarding, they don't don't know what your deck is, something like that, or if you're low on time. Like I mean, there's a things. few other factors that can relate. Like for instance, I mean, under extreme circumstances, maybe you really need to go get some food or something. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, sure. If it's you know, it, like, but for the most part, the uh, if it's not game one, the if it's the final game, like if you're facing elimination, right. you're not going to win by conceding. Right. You right. know. And you could always be wrong. Like, what if there is a way? You know, people have won more, like unwinnable games before. Yes. Exactly. Ryan Kibler's probably made a career out of winning a <laughs> winnable game. <laughs> dagger, dagger. Oh yeah, need some more juice. Uh, 
uh, brainstorm here, Vidi. Oh, I didn't mean it to be a dagger. I meant it to be a high compliment. <laughs> like having the like just fortitude to not give up, and then people eventually make a mistake that if they would have just played tight, you know. That's true. So Alex turtling up here, going into his <laughs> shell, looking for a solution. I mean, he's running out of time for the solution to be mutavolt, mutavolt. You know. Like he really, I think he needs to draw Mistress Factory next turn and then Mutavolt the turn after. You know, he needs to... Yeah, he's got to have a good draw here. It's not unwinnable, but it certainly isn't a great situation. There's a Caracas alongside that. Oh, so he's going to throw away his Jace to uh, curse scroll down that Kira. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. hey, what do you know? Another Jace. He's got to be careful. I mean, what if he just gets dazed here? Although I guess, you know, he's just been and clicked him, so yeah. he knows what's in his hand. Yeah. So Vidi down to eight life. Uh, I mean, board position looking good, but I agree. If he you know draws a bunch of mutavolts, so there what if what it. if he plays a Jace, Fate Seals, has to ship to the bottom? Then the top card is does, wait. Does Alex have another land? I don't think so. Okay, the top card is another mutavolt, and then so the top two cards are both mutavolts. One goes to the bottom. Then he plays mutavolt. The next turn he draws Mistress Factory. I mean, all right. So he, there he goes. He ships to, to the bottom. Ships to the bottom. So, I mean, there are a lot, there are sequences here, because Vidi's only at 8, and here, even if, like, if he plays a Mutavolt, he can hit for 2, hit Vidi, don't even hit Jace at this point, hit Vidi, knock him to 6 with 2 Mutavolts in play, and the next turn just draw a Mission back. I'm surprised Vidi served with that Vidalian click, I thought he'd want to leave it back to block that Mutavolt potentially. I, I think that Vidi might be slightly just wanting this to get over, like, he's a little bit, like, he can tell that he's made a few, you know, minor yeah. things, and he just, like, he's a little uncomfortable, he just wants to close it out, you know, like... Yeah. And you know that feeling where you're like, okay, I'll let this game slip away, I need to close it out before No, no, but it's not even happens. slipping away. This is one of those things where it's so far in the bag that you just don't want to be the guy who loses the 99.9% <laughs> Right, the exactly. There's 13 and a half minutes left in the round. Just oh, wow. This game has taken quite a while. Game one was a... Game was that was another Kira? Wow. That is a, no, is a... Oh, it is another one. Yeah, yeah that's his third... That's he, he only has two, right? Trying to buy himself. So I mean, here's the interesting thing. One here yeah, the interesting thing here is that then if Jace use, like tries to bounce it to fizzle so the curse scroll can hit, mm -hmm. he doesn't get the fate seal. Now the ponder could miss, so the S stone nothing, and then Alex can draw Mistress Factory this turn, right? And Vidi could attack with a click. I mean, a number of things could happen. A pit the needle on Mutavolt. Ugh. So that Pithy Needle that, uh, that's on top of BD's deck right now could shut down Mutavolt, which is uh, gigantic. But I don't know if he's going to be too restrained and want to save it for Aether Vial, potentially. So I guess... Nope, he's don't just going to run Mutavolt. it. Don't Well, all right. Mutavolt. All right, so... Alex could draw... A land and a Lawan Cephalid Empress. He could <laughs> just draw a land and he played in an island. He, maybe he boarded in Sower of Temptation. Seems a very peculiar card to board in in this matchup. Maybe he shuffled in all 15 and forgot to take one out. Like, I mean, Sam know. Black won a game that was completely unwinnable where he thought he had just no possible outs against Paul Chion in the top eight of U.S. Nationals. Mm -hmm. He thought he had stone, no outs at all, but didn't concede anyway because just you might as well play it out. He right. can't, we can't win if he concedes. Right. You know, his back's against the wall. Mm -hmm. And what does he draw? Sudden spoiling, a card that there's no way in the world he would board in in the fairy mirror, but or against fairies, not fairy mirror, but against fairies. But he had uh, he had it in his sideboard, and then he accidentally sideboarded it in because he did the 15 in, yeah. right. pull 15 out. We, we were, were talking about, about this about yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. And then when he boards for the next game, he's trying to figure out: Am I supposed to keep it in? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think if you see it once, it's going to screw him up enough that uh, uh, so he's, he's going to play around land, it. Land. So Alex is definitely running out of time before. Well, uh, uh, yeah, Vidi decides to go on the attack plan. Because yeah, see, Lawan is Luan, If he accidentally sideboarded into Lawan, that's an out. It doesn't get curse scroll. I guess there's Chase. That's a rough board position for Alex. I mean, although the Mistress Factory can still get in there, it is not a named Muta Vault, but that's not going to be enough on its own. There's just like I'm. Um, Way too many things going wrong here for there to even be. I mean, <laughs> yeah. His only realistic out is Vidi uh, doing something, drawing like an extra some, card, or yeah. just making a big mistake, like using his cards wrong, like not uh, naming the wrong card with first roll type stuff. <laughs> sure. I mean, it could happen. So what are these? What are their players' records? Like, what are these guys' records? Uh, these guys are 
should be. I think uh, they're I the X1. Are they X1? Because I know Alex is X1, so either Alex is playing up. So does this this puts out this would knock Alex out of top eight? Yes. This is a big match. I, well, I mean, you guess he top eighted the other one, so he's keeping up his pace. Is this the current uh, the most recent pairings? Alright. So uh, Alex making one last salvo here. Last ditch effort. Yeah, they're they're both uh, five and one going into this round. And yeah, he drops a couple uh, cards. He's got one more coming. There's a Rishiri trigger on the stack. Mm. And uh, Vidi is contemplating. There's a Lord of Atlantis in his hand. Yep. So this is where he's debating. Is there any way he can sneak the Lord into play? Or does he just play the commander and, uh, and hope that somehow he gets hit? This is a reasonable decision because, like, either way, if his opponent plays tight. So there's the commander. So now he's got to hope that his opponent hits the commander. Vidi continuing to, no, continuing to uh, take away all of Alex's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you trying to win, Vidi? It's no fun for Alex. All right, so he taps the island, levels up that commander for once. All right, <laughs> scroll the Vidri. He's scrolling again. Oh, Peacekeeper. Hmm. hmm. That could be make things difficult. Yes, as if there was any doubt, Alex has stone zero outs to <laughs> Peacekeeper in his entire deck. And I doubt he boarded in. Yeah, no, there's, no, there's nothing, actually. I mean, there's submerged. <laughs> doubt he boarded in against Blue White, almost creatureless. If he had that sore, he could uh, take it and not pay the upkeep. If he didn't get scrolled. In this, this whole situation. This is a lot of different locking components. Yeah. Yeah. It's just got so many. Just so many under the weight of so much pressure. So has uh, how long has been Vidi? Uh, how long has Vidi been playing Magic like heavily? Where he's been getting back into you know. I I don't know, Gavin. Uh, he, he's been playing it for a while. He played it before he played Versus, but Versus was very profitable for him, so he just kept with that. He won like two of the pro circuits, maybe two or three, top eight at six, something insane like that, and that was really good. But then obviously when that went downhill. Uh, you know, I started getting, getting back into Magic, he won a PPQ, he, uh, I remember him in San Juan, and uh, played in Pro Tour Berlin, so he's been playing for a while. <laughs> I don't know, we'll try and get him in the booth maybe, I'll uh, step out for a second, we can see if we can talk to him. And that commander gets leveled up a little more. Vidi shuffling his library for a little apparent reason. Got to reduce his life total. <laughs> Keep it interesting. Yeah, I was going to say the increment of one might not matter, but uh, it actually does because of, of the power and toughness of the Coral Helm Commander and the Curse Catcher. Not that it matters that much. He's got a Peacekeeper in his hand. Right, exactly. Like, he has only to play the Peacekeeper to seal the deal. But he, I guess he can't be sure of what Alex's sideboard is. No. Right. Maybe he has internet. Alex could have a curse scroll or something. Right, exactly. Who knows? And we have another Swords to Plowshares. Oh, he got rid of the Peacekeeper. Interesting. You figured right, well, that, that would destroy all of the drama. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just feels like, oh, I'm going to kill him with Medallion Click. I don't want to cast this Peacekeeper. He but has shuffled away Moat. And teach me. Man, it's so weird. It seems like you want to keep that just as a safety net in case something goes wrong, you know? Yeah. Well, How is he going to plow? All right. Plow so for plow four. that guy. Oh, for sure. And then uh, surf for three. Probably, do uh, you think you curse scroll the curse catch here or just pass back? Oh, uh, uh, just asked for an update. The elves deck we looked at last round that was really awesome just lost but no doubt we'll have a deck tech up on him on the uh <laughs> apparently main site no, no sir <laughs> no deck tech <laughs> no deck tech yeah glenn glenn's out of time oh that's so unfortunate well hopefully uh his deck list makes it w makes its way onto the internet for you guys to check out
Can I put his deck list in my pocket after the event is over? Oh, there's a trinket mage. Oh, it is this one. Here it is. Yeah, I for some reason looked at it and didn't even see. For some reason, thought it was something different. Oh no, I got it memorized. Really? Quiz me. <laughs> First, we're going to quiz Chapin on this deck list, and then we're going to have a land tax, non land tax challenge. That's exciting. I would lo I'm excited to yeah. watch the land tax challenge. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, uh, this was on Yo MTG Taps episode 50. We had Patrick on with Jerry, and uh, there was discussion about whether or not land tax being unbanned in Legacy would be, uh, w whether or not that should be uh, a realistic. Or I guess basically, would it be too strong if it were unbanned in Legacy? Patrick is on the side of absolutely, I think. And yeah. Jerry. Now, is, keep in mind, I'm also on the side of loving land tax. That's true. That's true. <laughs> like, that's I love true. land tax more than most. I would love to play some land tax. The only problem is that I would love to play land tax much the same way I would love to play Survival of the Fittest. Yeah. So, and and that's that's kind of your uh, your assertion here. It's it's a strong card. It's not yeah. just a strong card. Yeah, but, so, yeah it's yeah. also undesirable for turn of play. But so, so we'll get, we'll, yeah, we'll get back to you yeah. and yeah, I'll take that match down. Okay. okay, thank you guys very much. Thank, thank you, Shafin, and uh, we'll catch you up with you later to yeah, grab that. Yeah, I'll be that, uh, Cool. <laughs> Gotta go grab some food. Yeah, Absolutely. sounds good. Yeah. Good work with